So this car right here. So um, I think it was in Ghana, I think 2009. And so I went to my Sunday school teacher's house and she had this dog. Then it saw me, didn't recognize me and chasing me. I turned around, poof, my head around the wall, not to get stitches. And the way this one nurse talked to me, talked me through it, I'm like, yeah, that's what I want to do. It's like, yo, I'm gonna be a doctor. Well, I met James through his application. We asked all of the Junior Academy students to write an essay similar to the one that James wrote here, identifying a problem that they wanted to solve. Could this be the end of an already dying continent? According to UNICEF.org, malaria kills approximately 219 million people each year, with an estimated 66,000 deaths, mostly children in Africa. Being a 14-year-old boy who grew up in Ghana, where the number one cause of death is malaria and opportunities for better living is really limited. Research was really slow, leaving little to no hope to families. Being able to be in the United States alone is a blessing, but my research has merely been Googling things, reading articles and watching videos. Being able to research with the Junior Academy will open a whole new world of hands-on research on new ways of eradicating the disease. The morning I got this, I just checked my email and it says congratulations. I'm like, congratulations for what? I looked up, you've been accepted to the Academy. I'm like, wow, I got in. Congratulations, that's the best part. So my first Junior Academy project was agricultural and food waste to produce energy. So then we started researching, um, doing sketches for what our final project was gonna look like. These are the names of my team members, Jason, James, or oh, Jason's our mentor. James, me, Danae, Gustavo, and Yifei. So over here we, we have the trucks. So the trucks are gonna bring the um, organic material or the compost into the site. So after the storage, it goes into the fermentation tanks. So then that's how it's gonna turn into methane. So then it goes into the generators and generators transform into energy. So after we came up with this idea, um, our mentor, Jason, finds out a week later that Stop and Shop came up with the exact same thing. If we can come up with that little idea that Stop and Shop, a big company like this, could use, like, man, that's that's huge. Like, we can do it. We're on the right track. We can do anything now. We're geniuses too. It was truly the epitome of teamwork from mm -hmm. multiple locations. We had Gustavo in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. Danae was in Texas, you were in New York, and your bang was in China, which was, I think it was 12 or 13 hours different. Uh, yeah. At the end of the day, everybody working together, the mm -hmm. commitment was obvious. I can't wait to see you guys on the cover of Time Magazine someday. <laughs> Thank you. James is an example of the type of person, the type of learner, that we're looking for in the Junior Academy. I mean, when he talks about, I've done my research alone and using Google, I see someone who is bright and who is motivated, but has yet had an opportunity to really have the network of experts that can help him take that curiosity and become the STEM leader of the future. So this was created at my school, Bruce Academy. Um, second period, our class, Miss Moore. She's a great teacher. Um, so we were asked, um, how do we see ourselves? And then he sees as a warrior, and then he's the strongest warrior and a lion. You can see he's brave, he's not afraid of anything, he can do whatever he wants. And then he looks like he's looking out to do something. So what I'm looking out to do is um, set even the playing field for kids all across the world, Everyone not have some kids lacking resources, and have everyone live up to their full potential. Like a few years from now, I'm just gonna look back at this sound. It's like, that's when it all started. Junior Academy, New York Academy of Science, that's where it all started.